The USC Trojans concluded uh, spring drills on Thursday. Now it's just up to the spring game, which is coming your way at uh, noon Pacific time. And we bring in Nick uh, Dempsey from Conquest Chronicles, who's got a lot on his plate in regards to taking in the spring game and Nick, a lot that you would like to see on Saturday. Yeah, there's a, a lot of question marks. I think this team uh, needs answered. There's a lot of good potential answers for uh, many of these, but uh, until we actually get guys, you know, into a game situation, um, it's it's difficult to tell. Now, there's there's one important note. It's not really going to be a game. It's sort of just going to be a televised practice because the injury count is really high for USC. And so Helton doesn't really think he has enough guys to line them up uh, into two teams and play each other. Doesn't want to risk any more injuries. Uh, so he's holding a lot of guys out. Um, he's just playing it safe with a lot of guys. Some guys just can't go, period. Um, but there are it's there are going to be you know some scrimmage like situations. And one of the big questions uh, we're going to what found found out is. You know, you lost Darius Rogers and Juju Smith-Schuster to the draft um, slash graduation. Um, and so now the question is, who's who's the number one guy at wide receiver? Um, who steps up? Uh, Hel or, uh, Darnold did a great job last year spreading the ball around. It was not just a Juju Smith-Schuster show all the time in the passing game, which is great. Um but it's going to be a little difficult to answer that question on Saturday because Deontay Bur Burnett, who had that amazing Rose Bowl game, uh, as you all remember, uh, he's going to be out with a head injury. Uh, Pi, or excuse me, Keyshawn Pai Young is uh, he's going to be out. He's got a groin injury; they're holding him back. Stephen Mitchell still coming back from his knee injury from last season; he's going to be out. Uh, Trevon Sidney. Uh, will be out uh, for spring camp as well. Daniel Imator Bebe and Tyler Petit are both going to miss the game, so that's two tight ends there. So you've got you know six targets for Darnold, who are not going to be on the field tomorrow, and his two top uh, statistical wide receivers last year in terms of catches uh, have moved on. So you know who steps up a wide receiver i think is going to be a very big question for all the talk about how great darnold is and heisman hype and all these sorts of things he's still got to throw the ball to somebody and in theory they're going to catch it so we will uh, we really want to see who's that who's that go-to guy when you got to get it when it's third and long and you got to get a first down who's going to be that number one guy you're going to be looking for um it seems like deontay burnett would be a good front runner but we won't see if that's the case tomorrow because he'll be out. Uh, speaking of injuries, the offensive line right now is just wrecked. Uh, tons and tons of injury, injuries, top to bottom, uh, are all injured. You got um, uh, Chuma Adoga, he's at, he's out. Uh, Andrew Voorhees, he's he's dealing with some injuries. He'll be out for tomorrow as well. Uh, you got Nathan Smith. You got Vianney Talamavayo, he's out. Um the good thing about USC is, though, that they cross-train their offensive linemen. So, you know, they have guys who can play center and guard, uh, tackle and center. Um, so you got a lot of pieces moving around. So it'll be really good for a lot of these younger guys to get reps and to play multiple positions on the, on the offensive line. Uh, but right now, there's just a lot of their top-line talent uh, is gone. And this is in addition to losing three of their starters to the draft uh, from la from the Rose Bowl. So there is kind of nothing but question marks on the offensive line right now. Um, so that's obviously going to be a concern. Um, one of the great uh, thing areas I'm lo really looking forward to is that defensive front, which at the beginning of last season was a huge area of concern for USC, but they have recruited incredibly well on the defensive front seven. And so while they do have some guys that are going to miss tomorrow, Porter Gustin's going to be out. Kenny Bigelow is still coming back from the knee injury um, on the D-line, so they're not going to rush him back. But they've got a ton of elite recruits, at a linebacker, defensive tackle coming up. Uh, those guys need reps. I'd love to see them get out there on the field and compete. Uh, so I think the defensive front seven tomorrow is going to be, a, or on Saturday, is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Um. You're going to also want to look at, since we're on the defense, uh, Adoree Jackson had a tremendous amount of production 
uh, in the in the defensive backfield. I believe he had eight passes broken up, a bevy of interceptions. Uh, the guy just was really quite good. But he's gone, obviously. Um, we're we're kind of we're going to see if uh, Jamal Cook can can improve in the nickelback position. Uh, I want to see if Biggie Marshall, uh, a Dory's counterpart on the other side at cornerback, I want to see if he can become sort of the guy who can lock down uh, his side of the field. Um, he had some troubles getting beat deep last season, in particular. Uh, he had some troubles getting his head around to find the ball. So I really want to see. He's going to need to step up, and hopefully, he has a great game. Um, so keep an eye on who replaces a Dory. Uh, and then a final one, one of the final things I, I want to keep an eye on is Sam Darnold. I know we've talked about this before, Mark, uh, has thrown uh, quite a few interceptions in spring practice. Um, you don't want to put too much weight into that. It's spring ball. You know, it's, you know, it's, it is what it is. This is the time when you work these things out, but he's thrown more interceptions in this spring than he has in any previous springs and all of his previous spring practices uh, combined. So uh, that's a concern. And part of that could be a few reasons. One, the defense is is much, much more improved this year. So maybe it's just the defense is, is, is playing much better. Helton likes to go ones, ones versus ones. Um, two, the offensive line just might not be there right now because they're playing a lot of younger guys, a lot of guys that don't have a lot of reps. Um, so maybe he's getting extra pressure. Maybe he's getting forced. Uh, he's also uh, T. Martin, the offensive coordinator, has been far more aggressive in play calling and, and opening up the playbook for Darnold. So a lot of that could be just him getting new plays and getting um, new formations and new things to do while he's learning. Um, so I'm I, I'm going to be curious to see what his his interception count or even just bad pass count is uh, or poor poorly chosen pass to throw. Uh, I really want to keep an eye on that in a game situation to see if it if it is this line, if that's the concern, maybe the defense is just stepping up. If it's just a much better defense, then hey, nothing wrong with that. Um, but uh, if it's something else, or maybe he just doesn't have the newest parts of the playbook down, that's going to be an area of concern uh, you're going to want to keep an eye on. Uh, so... I don't know how many of these questions we're actually going to get answered tomorrow because, like I said, there's just a ton of injuries. Uh, it's not really going to be a full scrimmage. It's going to be more of a glorified practice, really. Uh, but this will be a great opportunity to, to look and see where everybody's at. Um, it'll be their first game. I think they've played a lot of these guys. You know, they're stepping into the limelight. They're, they're back on television. You know, a lot of these guys coming up did not really see much time last year. So it'll be interesting to see where those guys are at. Uh, you know, once the lights are turned on or the cameras are turned on the crowds back in the stadium. So, uh, tomorrow is going to be a good test. I think for a lot of these younger guys, it's going to be very, a very necessary experience for a lot of these younger guys. Uh, but there's just a lot of areas I really want to keep an eye on on Saturday. It was noted in the Daily Trojan that at the conclusion of Thursday's practice, the final practice, that uh, the offense ran three consecutive two-point conversions against the defense and was stopped. So two Darnold incompletions and then capped off by a, a Gene Harris interception to shut the offense out of the end zone. And you mentioned Deontay Burnett, and unfortunately we don't get to see him on Saturday, uh, but more fortunately would be to preserve him for week one of the regular season. But he has had such a sterling practice regiment during this uh, spring session. Uh, according to the LA Times, he hadn't dropped a pass at that point. And we were talking about like 50 passes during practice and had not missed hardly any assignments. He was pinpoint on everything expected for him to do. So following up the Rose Bowl, it's good to hear that uh, despite the injury, uh, he should be fine, that he's followed up that kind of stellar performance by putting in the work to become even better and maybe be the number one receiver you're talking about. Yeah, it's he should hopefully be able to. He came up through the uh, um, the scout team with Darnold, so it would make sense that Darnold's uh, just a lot more comfortable with him. Uh, although fifty catches in a row out of practice, uh, that's pretty impressive. But that the story uh, you just told about the three two point conversions in a row where the defense shut him out, uh, I got to tell you right now that probably drove Clay Hilton up the wall. Uh, one of the things he absolutely stresses is balance between the running and the passing game. 
And one of his his key points of emphasis is always going to be when we need to be able to run the football and get the yards we need to get when everyone in the building knows we're going to run the football. Um, so I would expect on Saturday to see a lot of situations like that where the offense, it's an absolute where they have to get two yards or three yards, and it's a running situation. I bet we're going to see a lot of that, especially if their last time in practice on Thursday, they went over three. So I, I would expect to keep an eye on that because that is something Helton is just will not is not going to let stand. He's going to he's going to put those guys to work on that real fast. All right. USC is expected to be an elite team in 2017, but there are problems to work through and nothing that uh, the talent and the coaching staff can't um, get them through. But there are things to be worked out and, and most notably are injuries that uh, are difficult to avoid at times with arresting a lot of players, hoping to get them ready for the first week of August. Nick Dempsey from Conquest Chronicles breaking down the USC spring game as we get uh, just hours away at this point, Nick. <laughs> should be a good game. Should be, well, should be a good practice. <laughs> we will see you soon. Of course, Mark, anytime.